There we go. All right. So that said, let's go ahead and get started. Whew. All right. War of the Roses fought between houses of York and Lancaster for over three decades during the 15th century in England. The houses were both branches of the royal family. Therefore, the wars were originally known as the Cousins War. Each player represents one of the houses as they fight to gain influence to control England. So you'll notice there are dice and there's a dice tray. So that means we're going to be rolling some bones today. Mm -hmm. The goal of the game is, well, before we start with that, let's talk about what we're looking at. So everybody has armies or influence cubes. Think of them. Jess playing Lancaster is going to be playing red. I'm white, which is York. We have our appropriately colored dice as well. We have potentially some French forces that will come into play. And then we have the main board itself. The game's going to play over a maximum of five rounds. Each of us starts with one influence or one army in each of the three regions. You have the north, central, and the south. And we each also start with two cubes in our reserve. In addition to that, each of us is going to start the game with six cards in our display or in our hand. And the cards, and I'll go ahead, and Jess is not paying attention, so that's good. And no, 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 <laughs> this way she doesn't see my cards. So what we're looking at here, there are two types of cards in this game. There are battle cards right here. You pretty obviously, the battle of whatever it is, and then there are event cards. So let's go through the anatomy of the card real quick. So the name of the battle, the date of the battle, the starting cubes that will be on the battlefield, and then the battle region matches both the name as well as the color as you can see there. Easy enough. In the top right hand corner of both the battle and the event cards, there are CP or command point or command value. So however, little yellow dots, however many there are, that's how many CP or how many CPs you're going to have or command points that you may have. Over here on the event card, you have the round track, which matches the round track up top. It has the secondary event, which in this case, the secondary event would be for House York. And then the actual secondary event is down here, whereas the main event if the card is played for the event, that will take place, or you have the command value over there in the top right-hand corner. So that's kind of everything that you're looking at as far as component-wise, how do you play the game? And honestly, I'm going to briefly go over each of the steps, and then instead of teaching how each step plays out, I think the best way to do this is to show you guys exactly how it goes in the game. So as I said, the game takes place over a maximum of five rounds. The goal of the game, obviously, to win the game is if at the end of a round, one player controls all three regions. Control means they have more influence in here, more influence being in the south. I have two to one. I would control that region. If you control all three regions at the end of a round or at the end of the fifth round, whoever controls the most regions, be it two or three, or if at the end of the fifth round and both of us control the same number of regions, the player who won the most battles. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. So the game takes place, as I said, over five rounds. Each round is broken up into seven steps or seven phases. The first thing is deal the action cards. Everyone's going to start the game and start each round with six cards in hand. Then we're going to swap one card each, knowingly. So I give this to Jess, she gives one to me, so we're back to six cards apiece. Then we're going to determine the battlefield, then play action cards, then reserve the battle, then check for victory, then clean up and get ready for the next round if applicable. So okay, real quick, deal action cards. Players may, at the end of a round, have one card left in hand, deal back up to six. Okay, that's step one. Step two, swap a card. Give one card of your choice to the other player. Awesome, we're moving right along. The third one is determine the battlefield. Each player must play a battle card face down in front of them 
and then when we both have selected one, we're going to flip it over. If you do not have a battle card in your hand, you may play an event, but basically you're forfeiting control of the battle to begin with, the choice of battle, okay? So that said, we're both going to play a uh, battle card, and for argument's sake, let's say these were the two battles that were played. This played by Jess, this played by me. Whichever took place earlier is going to be the battle that's going to take place. So in this case, it would be Ludford Bridge in October 12, 1459. So this one would then be discarded, okay? At that point, whatever the actual card it shows, where you're going to seed it with that army on it, and then we're going to put it here. If Jess controlled or played it, we'll play it over here if I'm the one who played it. Easy enough, and we'll have it out there. Then we're going to play action cards. That leaves us five cards left in hand. So out of those five cards, each of us is going to take four turns or four actions. We're playing one card each. So what do we do? Well, when we play a card, going to be able to, for instance, let's say I played this card. I can use it for one of two things, either the event, the primary event, doing it for the entire primary event, move one or two of my cubes from the battlefield to the battle region. Okay. Pretty easy. So from here to the battle region. Okay. Or I can do it for the CP. And if I choose to do it for the CP, I have five different options on what to do with those command points. First, I can move troops from the supply to my reserve, one per CP. So in this case, I could take three here and put them down into my reserve. Okay, easy enough. That's how I can use the card. Okay, or I could move troops from my reserve to the battlefield. So what does that mean? Well, the game, the battle would have started with one Lancaster there. I could waste one CP because I have three CP, but I only have two in my reserve to then move them from my reserve to the battlefield. Okay, that's two options. The third one is to move influence between regions. Well, if I want, I may move up to the command value here from one or two regions to adjacent regions. So what does that mean? If I want to move to the center, I could choose to move one there and one there. That's all I have. So I would technically be wasting one of the command points. Okay. That's the third option. The fourth option is to attempt to place influence from my reserve into the region or into a chosen region. In this case, this one's pretty simple. I say, I choose a region. I wanna go ahead and add it to the central region. I then put it off to the side for that central region. How many units do I have in that region? Two. All right, so that means I would have to roll a die and try and roll higher than two. Mm -hmm. If I was successful, if I rolled a three or higher, Boom, done, and the, this is the number of attempts that I get to place one unit into one region. Right. But as it were, I failed. Because that number is lower than that two, which it would be if it were successful, because it's lower, that actually goes back to the supply. If I had rolled a two, however, that would have failed, but it would have gone back into my reserve. Because it that was equal what it would have exactly. been. Exactly. So in that case, eh, okay, I'm 0 for 1. And with that roll, you know what? Maybe I'll go ahead and try and add it down here. Again, got a roll higher than a 2. That's successful. Boom, I'm done. Mm -hmm. That's the end of my attempts because I was successful. You can only place one unit or one influence in a given region per action. Okay. So, okay, easy enough. The fifth and final option is to attempt to remove one influence from a region. And that works the exact same way, but in opposite for the opponent. So let's say Jess had these three down here in the south, and I say, you know what, I'm going to use the CP as attempts to try and remove. I need to roll below that number to try and remove one. So I would roll a bone, I roll, uh, let's say I roll a three. Well, that sort of is successful, 
And I say sort of because it's the same number. So what happens? One of these comes into Jess's reserve, mm -hmm. and I successfully removed one. If it were a number lower than three, instead it would have gone back into Just the supply. Okay? Easy enough. We're going to do that a total of four times. Okay? Then we move into the last one, which is resolving battle. And honestly, this is the point where Liar's Dice comes into play, but I do think this is probably better shown than explained. So we'll go ahead and do that. And what it is, well, you know what? Let's just go ahead and roll into it and we'll go from there. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, you cool with that or yes. do you think I should go ahead and do it? You should, you're good. Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and try. Let's go ahead and do it as is. So now that Jess has been paying attention and <laughs> has seen my cards, I'm going to shuffle mine up and we'll get into it. So resolving battle is going to possibly, it's going to be putting cubes of one player into each region at the end of a battle. And then we're going to check for victory. After we have checked for victory, if no one player controls all the regions, it's not the end of the fifth round. We then go into a cleanup, which is if we're still holding an action card, you can choose to keep it or discard it, shuffle up the cards, draw six new ones or up to six and then move in to the next round. So these, all of these cards are out of play for this round. We don't know what they are, so we're just gonna move them off screen there.